Tata Steel so, today, Nigel. Well, that's right. Let's get to the management. Remember, Tata Steel had posted a lower than expected numbers uh, in the past quarter. You know, the net loss that came in was because of a couple of one-offs. The stock opened up lower, but it's now recovered from the low point of the day. We're now joined by the company's MD and CEO, Mr. TV Narendran, to discuss the past quarter and the way ahead as well. Hi, Mr. Narendra. And, uh, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, coking coal, that's going to be the joker in the pack. You know, for the past quarter, you'd have seen some kind of relief on that front. And the coming quarter, maybe coking coal prices go up. So break that down for us. What was the benefit and how much do you see prices go up, both in India as well as in Europe? It's been a challenging quarter. I think we had guided that it will be a challenging quarter. Uh, so coking coal prices, uh, I think, dropped by about 55 to $60 dollars on a consumption basis uh, in Q2 compared to Q1 uh, for India is expected to go up by about $10 uh, Q3 compared to Q2. As far as Europe is concerned, uh, we had slightly different situations in UK and Netherlands. I think in UK, the drop was uh, about $45 per ton Q2 to Q1. It's going to be about $20 a ton uh, Q3 to Q2 will drop further. Whereas in Netherlands, the drop in Q2 was a bit less because they were consuming high cost coal that they had. So the drop was only about $10 uh, Q2 to Q1 is expected to be about uh, $50, $55 Q3 to Q2. Okay, so Mr. Narendran, can you give us a sense about the steel prices? How much higher will they be in quarter three versus quarter two? We are looking at around 2,300 rupees per ton Q3 over Q2 in India. Uh, but in Europe and uh, UK and Netherlands, it's going to be lower because uh, in Netherlands, Actually, it's going to be about uh, 100 pounds lower per ton Q3 compared to Q2 because a lot of long-term contracts uh, come up for negotiation. Uh, we have a lot of annual contracts, auto contracts, packaging contracts in Netherlands. In uh, UK, it will be less, uh, maybe about uh, 50 pounds per ton lower in Q3 compared to Q2. So we've got a sense on input costs, that's coking coal, and now you've given us an outlook in terms of pricing as well. What does both those these two mean on an EBITDA per ton basis, both for India as well as for Europe? Uh, basically, we're guiding that H2 will be better than H1, and you will start seeing the improvements in Q3 and uh, in Q4. Clearly, in India, as you said, the uh, steel prices have gone up in Q3 compared to Q2. Uh, coking coal prices, uh, consumption basis is going up a bit, Q3 to Q, uh, Q2, but the steel prices more than cover for that. And we're waiting to see the pricing outlook for Q4. Uh, so I think India, you will see margin expansion. Uh, in Europe, you will see margin expansion in Netherlands because uh, one of the challenges that we've had in the last six months in Netherlands is the blast one is six, which is 40% of our production has been down for relining. It should come up uh, by the end of November, first week of December latest. And uh, so we will have a normal Q4. So you will see higher volumes. Uh, you will see better costs because the fixed costs will be apportioned over larger volumes. So you will see margin expansion in Netherlands in Q3 and Q2, Q4 compared to Q1 and Q2. Uh, so Netherlands should go to positive EBITDA in Q4. Uh, UK is still struggling with uh, various challenges. Uh, we don't see things getting worse, but uh, things will stay as they are, as we are seeing it today. Okay, H2 will be better than H1, and that's why the recovery that we are seeing in the stock as well. But what about the debt outlook from here on? And is there any change in your CapEx plans? So I think uh, the CAPEX uh, guidance for the year we gave was about 16,000 crores. A lot of it uh, was going into Kalinganagar, which is at its uh, final stage of completion. Uh, so we are, uh, uh, for now, sticking with that. We are obviously conscious about the cash flows and the fact that the debt has not uh, come down the way we had wanted it to, largely because of the fact that uh, the operating performance could have been better, particularly in Europe. Even in India, we could have done a bit better. So I think uh, that's where we are. Uh, obviously, our goal of $1 billion reduction per year, which we announced a few years back, stands. But I know that this year looks very challenging given where we are today. But we are obviously going to be taking steps in H2 to find a better balance between uh, commitments on CapEx and everything else uh, and the cash flows that we generate. So we are looking at it very closely to see what we can do for the rest of the year. But yes, this looks like a challenging year as far as debt reduction is concerned. All right, uh, Mr. Narendra, so where does the debt go then? It's a challenging year, we get that. But from the 77,000 net debt mark, will it go up or down? I think uh, from now on, it, uh, it should start uh, balancing at this level. I don't want to give you a specific number just yet. We're trying to see how can we get it lower. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how you get it lower because as of now, you know, it's just ballooned up to around 77,000 uh, crores odd. But let's focus on inorganic growth. Are you interested in steel plants, maybe that of Vedanta or uh, NMDC's plants? Or do you want to focus only on organic growth in terms of capacity? No, at this point in time, we are focused on completing the projects uh, that are at an advanced stage, particularly the Kalinganagar project, and the plan, plan the next phase of uh, organic growth. Just keep a close eye on a balance sheet so that mm. we balance uh, the growth and the capex well. Because uh, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, inter while the India market has been strong and consumption has been strong, international markets have been a bit weak. So we're conscious of that. And uh, we will obviously look out uh, for uh, organic growth opportunities, which we have, and we will pace it uh, based on our appetite in the balance sheet. Okay, take that point. Uh, uh, Mr. Narendra, Tata Steel and the UK government, they've agreed on investment proposal in the UK steel unit. So how much would this be uh, in terms of employee restructuring cost? As reports suggest that nearly 3,000 employees may be made redundant. No, I think that number is what is uh, being consulted currently with the unions. Uh, there are indications which uh, you've seen in the media, etc. But I think largely this is uh, subject to consultations. Uh, we are in the process of uh, going through the consultations with the unions. We are also obligated to have meaningful consultations. We're doing that. Uh, obviously, we have agreed to some framework with the government, but that is subject to uh, taking it through the consultation process, uh, which is what we're going through currently. Whatever we need to provide for that restructuring has al already been provided, and that's why we've taken the hit that we did in Q2. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Narendran, and detailing the numbers in quarter two and most, most importantly, the outlook going forward where you expect recovery to come by in second half of the stock at the day's high. And this is something that you were mentioning as well, yeah. Nigel, that commentary is strong and that's why the recovery. Well, that's right. You know, I don't know how they're going to manage that, but they're saying that the coking coal cost will go up by only $10 in the third quarter in comparison to quarter two. The other competitors like, say, JSPL and JSW Steel, they told me $50 per ton. So maybe they have some low-cost inventory and maybe they are changing their mix. So that will be in encouraging. The past quarter's numbers were disappointing, but the way ahead, they sound a little bit more optimistic, particularly on the India business. Okay, all right. With that, we'll sip into a